Let's talk about what's going on in the world of government supported schemes for the minorities. India, from being the world's largest democracy with over a billion citizens and being culturally rich amongst all nuclear powers combined together, to being adversely poor in terms of socio economic front for its minorities. For the last six years, the indifferences amongst minorities have been on an all time high. Nationalistic sentiments are being questioned openly, with respect to religious beliefs leading to biasness amongst one's equal. Minorities have been led to believe they need to fend for themselves as the government is bent to take away the liberty they were born into. This is Macy and this video will cover just one part of various schemes under the welfare of minority, hoping to educate saturated minds, hoping to open their eyes to possibilities. On the 8th of August of 2015, the Ministry of Minority Affairs had announced the launching of Naimanzil, a purposeful development for the minority community through an integrated education and livelihood initiative. Supported by the World Bank funding, the Government of India had signed a $50 million financing agreement with the then Acting Country Director of International Development Association, Mr. Michael Haney. On the 30th of December 2015, to push forward the Naimanzil scheme. Being the principal implementing agency of Naimanzil Yojana, the Ministry of Minority Affairs had formed a core team under Program Management Unit, headed by the project director, Mr. P.K. Thakur, having a similar rank as a joint secretary in the Government of India, with an additional director and under secretary managing a team of sector experienced technical administrators. Simultaneously, an independent steering committee was set up to supervise and guide the project management unit as well. With the team structure and the key players in place, the Ministry of Minority Affairs Nai Manzil Yojana envisaged benefiting about 100,000 minority youth in five years. Under the keen supervision of the steering committee, Nai Manzil Yojana successfully enrolled 95,966 students till last quarter of 2017, 52% of which were girls. 30% of the beneficiaries enrolled in open basic education. 70% of the beneficiaries had enrolled in secondary education. For 2,000 beneficiaries got skill certified. 13,500 had gotten employed. And all of this was possible with the help of 111 project management agencies across India. Scheme till date have been implemented in 22 states. States like Goa, Kerala, Mizoram, Nagaland, Odisha, Pondicherry, Sikkim and Arunachal Pradesh are yet to be covered under the scheme as of September 2017. Together, the project management unit, the steering committee and all the project implementation agencies had focused their reach of programs, their strategies around the very objective was derived from the finance agreement signed between the Ministry of Minority Affairs and the International Development Association. Special emphasis was being given by the steering committee earmarking anti-corruption guidelines. The eligibility criteria for beneficiaries such as the training should belong to minority community under the National Commissions Act 1992. Training age group between 17 and 35 years. Trainees should belong to registered below poverty line families. 30% seats for girls. 5% seats reserved for people with disabilities. Also 15% seats reserved for below poverty families of non-minority communities 
In case reserved seats remain vacant, these seats will be treated as unreserved. This chapter covers three key components around which the Naimanza scheme is administered. The educational component, skill training component, job placement component. Within the educational component, the primary objectives were to assist disadvantaged youth to attain certification from the National Institute of Open Schooling or any state open school, which was equivalent to elementary education program of the formal education system. These open basic education program offered at four levels. Level A, which was equivalent to class 8th, level B and level C. The secondary level examination program was equivalent to class 10th. Depending on their eligibility, the beneficiaries undergo the open basic education. The process for the education component began with the preliminary assessment, moving to counseling, then formation of batches, registration with the NIOS, then teaching of those batches, and then eventually assessment and certifications. Under the skill training component, the objectives were to offer skills training complying with the National Skills Qualification Framework, Level 3 and above. Minimum three months of skills training program, which includes information technology training, basic English, includes module on health awareness and life skills, including basic hygiene and first aid. The process undertaken for the skills training component began with a skill gap assessment, moving to selection of trade, then timing and duration of the training, then teaching of the batches, and finally the assessment and the certification. Finally, under the job placement component, the objective was to place a candidate successfully in regular employment in the sector they were trained into, ensuring minimum wages as mandated in the state for semi-skilled workers, ensuring employers provide provident fund, employment state insurance, Pradhan Mantri Jeevan Jyoti Bhima Yojana, etc. Also ensuring regular connects made with regional industry, industrial houses, organizing monthly job fairs, job opportunities to be introduced with the minimum chances of dislocation. Also ensuring the candidates are provided monthly financial incentives of up to 2000 rupees for two months as post placement support. While the Naimans Yojana was being implemented, the steering committee earmarked anti-corruption guidelines for the project implementation agencies. The purpose behind the guidelines was to ensure the agency should be at least three years old, a registered society or a company or a trust, should have a valid a PAN, TAN and a service tax registration number or equivalent registration in case of foreign applicants. Also to ensure the agency must be affiliated to National Skills Development Council, NSDC, Sector Skill Council and accredited to National Institute of Open Schooling or State Open Schooling. The agency should have annual turnover of 5 crores or above for the past 3 financial years. The agency must have a rooted experience in conducting education for school dropouts, job orientation, self-employment, entrepreneurship. The agency had to have trained 500 people annually in the last three years under government schemes. The preference were to be given to agencies having experience in working with minorities or having presence in minority areas. The agency should be free from any unsatisfactory track record with the government of India. Qualification of which would lead to signing a 32-month result-oriented performance agreement between the Ministry of Minority Affairs and Project Implementation Agency. As the success of Naiman Yojana is being attributed to the administration under Mr. P.K. Thakur and the guidelines being earmarked by the steering committee, the role of the project implementation agencies has been instrumental. So, as a bonus source information, let me share 